I'll now show you a collection of the most basic editing commands. When I say editing commands, I'm talking about commands that will actually allow you to modify the document. I'll begin with commands that take you into insert mode. There's a variety of commands that take you into insert mode. So what you do when you get there, obviously, is that you type in some text. And when you finish typing in your text, you press escape and you return to command mode. Probably the simplest ones are A and I, which append, or if you like, insert. I is for insert and A is for append. Text after or before the current cursor. A for after, I for before. Here I am sitting in my document. Maybe I would like to add the word long to this document and I'd like to add it right here. So here reach the top of the long road. Now the cursor is flashing on the space between the word the and the word road. So if I type in A, just the letter A, I'm now in insert mode. The cursor has moved ahead to the next spot, which is the spot where I'm going to be now typing. L-O-N-G space. And of course I pressed escape there as well. So that's an example of typing in A. I'll now type in something using I for insert. Insert before the current cursor. So here on the word smiled I will type in the letter I followed by a a double l space. They all smiled at one another. There's very little difference between those two commands. The only difference is do you insert text before the current cursor or append text after the current cursor. Anyway, let's move on. Similarly, we have got capital A and capital I, which are very useful, surprisingly useful additions to the VI language. Append text to the end of the line or insert text at the beginning of the line. They obviously correspond to the lower case A's and I's. So I'll now insert text at the beginning of this line. And now notice that I don't actually have to go to the beginning of the line to insert the text there. I can just type in capital I. Type in capital I now. Notice the cursor is now at the beginning of the line and I'm in insert mode. And I'll type in the word then, space, and press escape and that inserted at the beginning of the line. Notice with all of these commands, A's and I's and capital A's and so on, it do, I'm, I'm only showing you examples where I type in one word. But I could type in many words. I could type in many lines. Let me show you that. I'll now just type in a simple A, A, and then I'll type in a bit of text, blah, 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 press enter, type in a bit more text, press enter, type in a bit more text, press enter, type in a bit more text, press enter, and then press escape. So I managed to append several lines of text at that particular insertion point. Moving right along we've got O which is open a new line or create a new line, a new empty blank line after or before the current line. Capital O is before and lowercase o is after. So if I'm on this particular line of garbage I can type in the letter O the new empty line opens up underneath that line. And you can see that I'm in insert mode, so I start typing. And when I'm finished, okay, I can even add a few more lines and press escape when I'm done. The O command clearly saves you the trouble of typing in capital A to jump to the end of the current line and then pressing a carriage return to create a new line. So it's a very useful and handy shortcut. Capital O will obviously create a new line above the line that I'm currently on. Now we have S, substitute the current character with text. You can prefix that with a number. If you said 5S, it would substitute the five current characters with text. And what text? Well, whatever text you type. You can type one letter, you can type 100 letters, you can type 20 lines of text, it doesn't matter you do not have to replace the current character with the same number of characters. So I've got the cursor resting on a full stop. Now I'll type in S, just the letter S by itself, and the full stop has disappeared and I'm in insert mode, which means I can now start typing. Now I might put in a comma in a great cloud of smoke. Full stop. Escape. 
So I replaced, if you like, one full stop with a great deal of text. I could do the same thing with this word great here. There's five letters in the word great, so I could type 5s and the word the entire word great, all those five letters disappear. And now I can type in huge grey, if I could spell grey properly, grey clouds, etc. Press escape because I'm in insert mode. And then I'm back in command mode. So that's the S command, substitute. And finally we have the C command, which is the change. It's very similar to substitute, but it doesn't work on letters or characters. With S you're substituting one character or ten characters. With C you're substituting several things. In this case, with CW, you're substituting words. You can also prefix that with a number. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Hopefully this will make sense with an example. I could simply use the word crack here and I could do CW which will change the word so it, I don't have to know how many characters are in the word or it'll just change the entire word. CW, the word crack disappears, I'm in insert mode. Every ravine, maybe. Alternatively, I could say, OK, we sat down. I could say, right, 2CW, and both the words sat down disappear. We rested, perhaps. Press escape. So notice that I did one change word, or CW changed one word, 2CW changed two words. I could type in, if I wanted to, 50CW, which would change 50 words if I happen to know that I wanted to change 50 words. But like I was trying to describe, you can actually use C in conjunction with lots of different things. Remember the dollar sign. If you type in dollar by itself, what does it do? Well, if you recall, it just takes you to the end of the line. It's a movement command, but you can actually use the dollar sign in conjunction with C. You can type in C dollar. Can you imagine what that would do? Well, what it actually does is it changes all the text from the current point in the line to the end of the line. End of the line because dollar sign. So I'll do that now. C dollar and everything on the line disappears and I can just type in whatever I like. Alternatively, remember the F command? I'm getting really complex on you now. F. Remember that will find a given character on the line like you could find a comma sign, or you could find a T, or find an N. You can use that in conjunction with the C command. If you typed C, F, comma, can you imagine what that would do? Well, it would change all of the text up until the next comma from the current point where the cursor is. So, if the cursor is where it is now on the word whom, if I type in C, F, comma, Everything up or to and including the comma disappears, and then I can type in some text instead. Perhaps just the word then and escape. The C command is very flexible. You can use it to change a word, you can change up to the end of the line, you can change up to a given character, and a few other combinations that I won't go into.